Okay, in this video, we're going to talk about some GD math uh, topics. And specifically, we're going to talk about rates, ratios, and proportions. So most certainly, you'll see some of this on a test. And this is just basic algebra um, uh, kind of uh, core concepts that you need to understand. So my name is John. Um, I'm the creator and founder of gdmathlessons.com. I'll tell you a little bit more about this later, and I'll leave a link in the description of this video. But for now, let's go ahead and talk about rates, ratios, and proportions, okay? Something you definitely need to know for the GED. Okay, so let's go and start with uh, rates first, okay? And let's do this. Rates... And we'll break it out this way, ratios and proportions. All right, so right off the bat, rates and ratios, these guys here are nothing more than just fractions, okay? Fractions. So you might be asking yourself, well, why don't we, why don't we just call them fractions and why do we have to give them these names, rates and ratios? Well... There, there are there is some additional parts to the definitions, but just know that they're fractions. So, for example, one third, uh, two fifths, etc. Okay, and let's put this here: one third and two fifths. Now, the key thing about rates and ratios is the units of measure. Okay, units of measure. Now, what I mean by that is that. The rates and ratios are um, fractions, but they're but the numbers in the fractions we're actually counting something. Okay, so we have a kind of units of measure to sign. So, for example, if you're counting distance, you might be using miles or inches or centimeters. And if you're counting time, you might be using minutes, hours, seconds. If you're counting volume, you might you be using gallons, liters etc. Okay, so anytime you're counting something and the unit by which you're counting, it could be people, it could be buildings, cars, that's what we're talking about. So there's going to be units of measure assigned. Now, rates, okay, are going to be, they're going to, uh, the, the numbers in the fraction, both the numerator and the denominator, are going to have the same units of measure. I'm going to put right here, units of measure, just like this, okay? And, um, Whoops, no, I had that backwards here. Let me just, I meant um, uh, ratios, okay, have the same units of measure. And rates have different units of measure. Okay, don't want to confuse you here. All right, so let's kind of uh, look at some examples. So if I said, hey, what's the rate of that car, okay? Or what's, uh, what uh, rate is that, is that airplane flying at? Some of you might um, associate the word rate with speed, okay? Rate, that's, this is something you should know right here. Sometimes we very often use it as uh, uh, speed, the speed of something, okay? And so for example, we might, take a look at, let's use another fraction here to make our life a little simpler. Let's say we had this, 100 miles, okay, per every three hours, okay. Now, this fraction bar breaks up this, this, uh, this uh, rate, okay, and we like to use the word per, okay. So, the fraction bar being, you could say it, 100 miles per hours. Notice I'm not saying 100 per three, okay? Because a rate actually has units of measure and they're different unit, units of measure. Here I'm comparing distance to time, okay? 100 miles per hour or 60 miles per hour, 85 miles per hour. That's how fast you go, right? But that's the rate. Well, what rate was the car um, going, you know? <laughs> you Maybe, um, you know, you kind of understand now how you, that term rate is a actual technical mathematical rate and we're comparing two different units of measure. But that's one example. Let's make up another example. Maybe we have two, let's make up, uh, let's say two uh, uh, cars per maybe five minutes, okay? 
So we might be counting something. Maybe you're uh, sitting at a very slow street intersection and there's hardly anything going by, trucks and cars, and you just kind of notice that, hey, every five minutes there's two cars. That's a rate, okay? So big thing that you need to remember is that uh, rates and ratios both are fractions, but the uh, the numerator and the denominator, the numbers in the fraction, we're actually measuring something, okay? In a rate, we're measuring two completely different concepts, okay? It could be time, uh, length, etc. All right, let's go over and take a look at ratios now. So ratios, um, we're measuring the same concept, okay? The same thing in the numerator and denominator. Now, it could be a little bit different here. Actually, I'm going to change this fraction this way. So for those of you who have ever taken a class, you might want to you um, look into the student-teacher ratio, okay? Student-teacher ratio. So for example, here's the teacher, and then here is the classroom, right? Uh, students. This is very common, by the way, when people talk about uh, academics and schools, etc. So the student-teacher ratio is how many teachers per how many students, okay? So in this example, I could have, I could say I have one teacher per 30 students. Now you might be saying to yourself, well, why isn't this a rate? Because they have different units of measure. Well, not so fast, okay? We're counting people, okay? This is one, we're, the, the, the noun or the concept, we're still counting people or persons, right? So these are, this is a person, that's one one person, and these are multiple people, okay? We're still counting the same concept. So one teacher to 30 students, that's a particular ratio. You could also have any number of different ratios, right? Um, you could have, say, two um, uh, Toyotas to every five Hondas, okay? So maybe you're in a parking lot, all right? Here's a parking lot outside. And here's two Toyota cars to every, let's say, five Honda cars, right? Over here. And so this is the particular ratio. And then this gets extrapolated out further. So really, you know, key terms you need to understand, rate and ratios and why they're, as, they're uh, um, defined as such. Okay. All right. Now let's move over to proportions here. And proportions are nothing more than two equal fractions two equal fractions so i'm going to write a fraction down here let's say the fraction one half now i want you to think to yourself can you come up with a fraction that it's equal to one half but it's but is different than you know one half it's not the actual fraction one half come give me another fraction that's equivalent to one half you might be saying to yourself how about four over eight Okay, there's all types of one. You can have three over six, you can have five over 10, 50 over 100. I think you kind of get it, right? So here I have two equal fractions. That is a proportion. Now, what's interesting about uh, proportions is, let me just give myself some room here, is something called the cross product. Cross product, okay? And the cross product is this. If I multiply crosswise, when you multi the result of doing a multiplication is called the product, okay? So if I multiply this way, I get the product. It's going to be equal to the product this way. You can see it's got kind of crisscrosses, right? So 1 times 8, okay, is going to be equal to 2 times 4. All right, so if you have a valid proportion, the cross product is always equal. So 8 is equal to 8. Now... Knowing that, we can solve proportion problems. So let's do this. How about we have x over 2 equals 5 over uh, 10? Okay. So real basic example. If I said solve this proportion, you have the fraction 5 tenths. Now you know that a proportion is two equal fractions. So what fraction would this have to be in order for it to be equivalent to 5 tenths? So hopefully you're saying to yourself, well, that has to be 1 half, right? Because 1 half is the same as 5 tenths. Uh, they're equivalent. So you would be right. But we can use the, pro the cross product to solve these type of basic proportion problems. So the way we do that is we just multiply across, crisscross, right? 
So 10 times x in algebra, we just write it as 10x. That means 10 times x. And then 2 times 5, I'll write it this way, is going to end up being 10, right? So 10x is equal to 2 times 5 is 10. And then I have to solve this basic algebra equation. That just requires me to divide both sides of the equation by 10. So x is equal to 1. So here, my original problem was x over 2 is equal to 5 over 10. So now that I know that x is equal to 1, I can rewrite this fraction. Instead of the x, I would write, okay, now I wouldn't write x over 2. I know that x is equal to 1. That's going to be 1 half. So my answer is 1 half, okay? So I don't want to go any further here about proportion problems, but they're critical, okay? Rates and ratio problems and understanding this, very, very um, critical in, in algebra and certainly uh, for your, uh, you know, ability to do well in GED. So anyways, uh, if you like this video, please uh, maybe give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Do a ton of stuff. Give me some feedback. I try to read as uh, many comments as possible. And uh, definitely invite you to my uh, free GED math course um, at gedmathlessons.com. I go into uh, proportions and rates and ratios more extensively and you know can actually uh, see how we can apply this to actually solve uh, various word problems. Okay, but anyways, I wish you all the best and thanks for watching.